Mixing with Mike Mixing Tip, using the Neve 1081 EQ on guitars. Uh, there are certain um, fits for vintage processors, and um, what you'll find is there that many engineers will kind of go to particular vintage components when they're uh, doing things for, you know, guitars or doing things for vocals and all of that sort of stuff. And you see it with lots of stuff. You see it with uh, with compressors especially. They're just things that seem to generally be a good fit for particular types of instruments. And there are reasons why. And uh, this is kind of the point of this video. So what I wanted to focus on here was uh, using a 1081 EQ. Now, um, in the, the lore of Neve equalizers, uh, the most well-known is the 1073, which goes back to the late 60s, created by Rupert Neve. And uh, not long after, in the early 70s, 1972, uh, came out the 1081. And the 1081 um, expanded on the 1073 by adding an extra band. So in addition, uh, so now uh, in addition to just a low pass filter, you also have a high, uh, sorry, uh, in addition to a high pass filter, uh, you now have a low pass filter. I got that backwards. Um, the low shelf has a, a bell peak. Uh, which it doesn't have on the original. It's only a shelving EQ on the 1073. Uh, you have two mid bands uh, with a high Q control, which is something you don't have in the 1073, which narrows the Q bandwidth. And we're going to get into why that's important for the guitars. And then you have a high frequency shelf, which can also be made into a bell curve. So those additions are, are very important uh, to the 1081. And it has a distinctly different sound from the 1073. Uh, there were a number of different EQs. This came out with the 8048 console um, that was released in 1972. Uh, one of my favorites is the 31102, uh, which is an amazing, amazing uh, EQ uh, that came out with the 10, uh, 8068 console. Um, but with all the different versions and variations, a lot of them use the same basic components, transformers, uh, preamps, and all of that sort of stuff. And uh, and your uh, love loss with it can sometimes be very swayed uh, if you're working on the actual analog equipment itself just because a particular console wasn't maintained well. And then it would skew your opinion about a particular EQ. Uh, this happened to me early on working on a console that was lo loaded with 1073s. So I was very excited and very disappointed afterwards thinking, did I miss something? And then later on worked on an amazing console and and that was extremely well maintained later and fell in love with it. Now, why is this particularly suited, well suited for guitars? One of the reasons is that um, guitars essentially have most of their cut or most of their tone kind of fits within a range that's very well represented in um, in this EQ. So what you have is selected positions here, 220, 270, 330, all the way up through the spectrum to 1.2K. And then on the high mid band, you pick up from there at 1.5, and then you kind of work through frequencies up to, uh, up to 8K. So when you're going through, though, you probably won't end up a whole lot higher than 1 or 2K or, you know, in, in the 2K, maybe 3K range because you start to get into a harshness. But there are things that make this tool really valuable. One is having um, the bell or shelving EQ to kind of pump some of the low end to kind of focus it. The filters on the top and bottom allowing you to kind of warm up the top end of the guitars and also kind of filter away some of the rumble that would make it interfere with the bass. Um, and then uh, just the, the shelving EQs, which can also add um, uh, a layer of depth. If, if, you're not, if you don't want to focus in on a particular frequency, just like I did here, I'll show you some options here where you can create an overall warmth with less amount of gain. Um, now, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to start uh, with this. I'm going to bypass it, and let's just kind of listen to the raw sound of these two guitars. And then uh, what I've done adding in here. And uh, part of what it was, what was the issue with these particular guitars, and and I'll A B this in the track so you can kind of get a sense for what this is about, but. 
uh, was to get them to kind of cut through. So the original guitars were a bit uh, over distorted and so trying to get the punchiness out of it. And you could hear how you can create these real cool tonal shifts. And a lot of this has to do with the high Q setting. And this really gives you an, an amazing character. So what I did is I linked these two um, EQs so that when I adjust one, you're going to see adjustments on both sides of them. But I want to just quickly AB this within the context of the overall track, just so you can get a sense of what it's like in and out. Obviously, there's a gain issue. And then the bass occupies a lot of the low end. So let's start by, um, I'm going to go ahead here and uh, take this and I'm going to uh, turn these guys off here for a second. And let's start by kind of working uh, in some of the uh, filters. I'm going to go back to a solo uh, mode here for a second. And uh, I'll also take this guy and kind of pull it back for a second. And so with the filter here, I can get rid of some rumble. There's not a whole lot here. I can also warm up the top end, which you have a tendency to get edgy on the distorted guitars. So that helps to kind of warm it up. And what I could do here, this is like kind of a, a, a one cool way that I do this a lot on bass. So I, my tendency is not to do it with guitars. Works really well on the 1073 on the bass, having a shelf on that low end because the fundamentals shift around because the chord changes are moving around. So there's no fixed fundamental. And sometimes when you work within a particular frequency range, too narrow of an area on um, uh, in in more fundamental frequency areas or lower areas in particular like this, what can end up happening is uh, that you can make certain things stick out more than others. Now, in general, this is not going to be the case with what we're doing here, and I'll kind of explain why, because most of the guitar parts, they're all in a limited kind of area, so I can work a little bit more focused. But what I wanted to show you here is how you can bring warmth into the sound, because we're going to bring some edginess when we get back to the mid filters. So that's like a little bit too muddy. So I'm gonna keep it there down at 100 and let's just kind of see how that goes. So I'm, I'm bringing up some gain down at 100. Uh, that's on a bell curve. So let's move it on a shelf. Maybe that's what I wanted to do here. I'm gonna go actually with that here and then to bring out some of that body. And now we'll go over to the mid filters to kind of work in some of this. Now, there's a couple ways of working this. One would be to kind of go in and tuck uh, something in there, maybe in the three, 400 range. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna focus on a frequency here that's gonna give me a little, bring out a little bit more of the edge and character here. So let's just kind of see. And I'm gonna start without the high cue button there with a wider cue. Now, when I work with this, you can notice like you hear a very phase shifty kind of sound and, and it's not, this is, uh, this an EVQ is a long way from a fa linear phase EQ. Um, I mean, there's really no such thing. The closest you can get to that in analog realm is passive EQs, um, but this is not that. And so there is phase shifting in there as you kind of hear it going through and you can actually even enhance that more um, you know, it's like an in-band kind of latency that occurs uh, because of the, uh, the design and the electronic components, the way the gain stage is applied. 
but I can really focus in on that particular frequency. And usually I'll go here somewhere in, in you know, like an 800 or 1K range, just kind of adding a little bit of gain, sometimes a little bit lower, because it'll actually help it to give it some body, especially in smaller speakers like laptop speakers and iPads and things like that. Um, when I kind of go up here, if I want to give it a little bit more edge, now I could kind of work a little bit more in the 1 to 2K range. If I start to go up too high, that actually doesn't sound too bad here. But that usually has a tendency to interfere with vocal parts and stuff. Let's hear what it sounds like in the context of the track. So when you hear that phasiness, it, it's actually, it's a little bit backwards here. Um, the, when the high Q, when this is, is lit up, it's actually off. And then it goes to a down position, which is the high Q in. And that's where you hear more of the phasiness, it's the sharpness of the Q. And that gives you a more natural sound. And uh, so what I'm going to do in, instead here is use this third band and this to push that 4K that I was 4.7K that I was liking there. And then we'll just kind of figure out whether that's going to be on a shelf or uh, actually that I got this backwards as well. get a focused sound there with those high Q buttons. Gives it like a real, like a, it gives it a much more aggressive tonal character. And then I can change that or shift that. Give it a warmer character here if I go down in the 500s. And, or give it an edgier character. And just, you can see how many variations you can get. The the four band is huge in this. The ability to go with uh, shelving or um, uh, peaking EQs on the low end, the two mid band EQs, uh, uh, parametrics with the high Q switch. That's such a powerful switch. You can really hear how that 
gives the guitar a really distinct tonal characteristic. And then as you kind of toggle through there, you can adjust the gains to kind of get it to fit uh, in the mix. It's just a powerful combination that I always just really love and gravitate towards for getting guitar sounds where you, you really want to, you know, dig something out to a sound that's more or less kind of muffled, maybe lacking a little bit of character. It's also very different than reamping. Reamping can sometimes work, but you, in this particular case, because the guitars are so distorted, you may be adding or layering on more distortion. Um, but outside of that, just working, um, you know, from an EQ perspective, this is something that if it was available, I would always go to for uh, guitar sounds, uh, where reamping uh, may not always be necessarily an easy possibility in, in a mix room. Um, whereas with plugins, you can get emulations of pretty much everything. And even if it's not as good as the original, you can do something that's also very cool. Uh, but, uh, a lot that you can dig out of it and, and a favorite. And I think that's like a, a really powerful, a good connection. And that's why I like it. And that's why I made this video. So, uh, that is the, uh, universal audio, uh, uh in this case, uh, 1081 EQ and uh, why it's so cool uh, for working uh, with guitar sounds, particularly distorted guitars, but pretty much any kind of guitar sound, uh, not just distorted guitars. Works also very well with acoustic guitars and, uh, you know, anything guitar related. It's amazing. Uh, Neve 1081 EQ.